Hello, I'm Dr. Carol Brown with the Equipping Minds Brain Development Center and the creator of the Equipping Minds Cognitive Development Curriculum. Now, as you know, executive functioning can be increased. Cognitive functions as a whole can be increased. There is a great benefit in social interaction, in play, in the use of what the student, whether it's a child or adult, already knows. So please just take a few minutes and watch how Equipping Minds comes across as a multi-component, multi-domain, multitasking, um, and even taking the Stroop effect to a nine and back. And please hear me, this is accessible for children as young as two and three to adults, literally nonverbal to college students. It has been um, used in so many different areas and I want to just share it with you today. So the first thing that we would do is start with the card game blink. Now we have 31 ways to use these cards. And the first thing they do is tell us what number they see. And so they would tell us they see oh, a one, a two, a three, a four, and a five. And then they would take the cards and they can do this individually, two people, a group, and then they would sort the cards. And when they sort them, they're always going to use language. If someone is pre-verbal, then you are their voice. And they would simply say four on four, one on one, three on three, four on four, one on one, and sort the cards. We would then sort by color and ask them what colors they see. And so they would be seeing black, and blue, and red, and purple, and yellow, and green. And then they would do the same thing. We would put out one of each card and they would sort those. So now they're ignoring the number they saw, but just saying the color. And they're always saying red on red, black on black, yellow on yellow. And then we would look at the shape. Now we have um, six shapes, just like we had six colors. And we'll have an X, a diamond, triangles, circles, lightning, and stars. And they would sort those. I will tell you, if there is a student who does not know their numbers or their colors or their shapes, we would start with only one. Please hear me, only one. And just short, sort one on one, one on one, one on one. And then we would just do green on green, green on green, green on green. And so we're gonna always meet the student where they are. Then we take it up a notch because what we just did, as you know, is a visual processing long-term memory retrieval. We've got some um, selective attention going on there as they are having to ignore the color and number when they're sorting shape. And then we alternate and make this a working memory exercise. And so we would ask them the number, so three, color, purple, shape, circle, three, green, X. And they would keep going with that. And that is incredibly challenging, <laughs> I'll just tell you. If they um, find that really easy, then we'll take it up a notch and they can say the number three, number color, three purple, and then all three, three green diamonds, three, four purple, three red stars. And then we eventually play the game. Now, when we play the game, they would have two cards down, and then you can begin with three cards out and they can match number, color, or shape. So they would say X on X, one on one, circle on circle, black on black, triangle on triangle, 
four on four, four on four, star on star, star on star, three on three, purple on purple, three on three, purple on purple, three on three. And so then they're using that working memory. They're having to um, make decisions. Am I going to match that by number or color? And very quickly, you are seeing those reasoning skills come into play as well. They are dealing with 17 elements, five color, five, excuse me, six colors, six shapes, and five numbers. So that's all in their brain. We also do the same thing with the game Quitch. Quitch has letters and numbers. And so you are also having um, to ignore the distraction of the other numbers here on the card, but they can at first sort these by um, letter, it's A through H, numbers one through eight. And then they can alternate and say the letter A, number three, C, seven, E, eight. And then they play this game by placing six cards down and then they can match if it is equal. And we'll start with equal and the student will say, oh, C on C, D on D, eight on eight, three on three, and match by number. Then when they can add one, and we would look at a card and say, if we were gonna add one, we could, what number do you see after one? Two, and after G, H. And so then they would either put one to two or G to H. We can also do minus and we would do G would go to F and in this game, kind of think of a clock, it only goes up to eight, but if we go backwards from one, in this game, it's gonna to go to eight. So um, there's a little cognitive flexibility there in seeing that. Eventually they play the game where there is an equal pile, a plus pile and a minus pile. And on the equal pile, of course, they can only play what's equal, minus, only what's minus and plus, what's plus. So they are looking at, keep in mind, six different possibilities at one time and having to make decisions. Please hear me, we have students who happen to have Down syndrome who can absolutely play that game amazingly. So don't let um, anything get in the way there. And there is a lot of math awareness going on, but it doesn't look like we're doing math. The other game that we'll use for that is the game Quitch, and um, is the game Set, actually. That one was Quitch. And you're going to find this has been maybe through four different vendors. Um, so you'll see different packagings on that. SAT has been around for a long time. It can seem inaccessible to many students, but we can start with a two and three year old to learn the concepts. Um, and they are simply first sorting by numbers, one, two, and three, and then they're sorting by colors and they're gonna have purple, red, and green. Then they're gonna sort by shapes, ovals, squigglies, and diamonds. And then they're gonna um, sort by the pattern. If it is open, striped, or solid. And then they will learn how to eventually play the game. But we do this by showing them sets. And so we would tell them if we have a one and a two, and are those the same or different? And those are different. So what number would we need? We would need a three. And what about our colors? Are those the same or different? Well, they're red, they're the same. So in this game, the next one has to be the same. So our color would have to be red. And our shapes, oh, they're both squigglies. Or some students might say wave. And are those the same shape? Yes, so this would have to be the same. So you would have three red squigglies to complete your set. And it eventually gets more complex. 
so that you would have one green open squiggly and two purple solid ovals. And if I have a one and a two, I would need a three green and purple. I need red squiggly and oval. I need a diamond open and solid. I need a stripe. So I need three red striped diamonds. And once again, please hear me. We have students who are nonverbal, pre-verbal, is what I'll say, who can absolutely learn to play that game. And so with those different card games, they are using, as, as you know, so many different components. That social interaction um, will also have them taking turns. It's not about the student performing, but it's engaging as a group or with another person. And you see that social and emotional health, you see that processing, that working memory, the language. Um, many times they'll say, Ms. Carol, you, you make me talk so much. And there, that eye-hand coordination is going on as well. So those are some wonderful games that we will use with the students. Now, there are also, um, it's also the option to just take a deck of cards, okay? Equipping Minds is incredibly affordable and accessible. So you could do the same thing with a deck of playing cards. I love to get some giant ones and they could absolutely tell me um, after they've sorted them by number, by color, by suit, then we could alternate saying the number five, color, red, suit, heart. And then you could do plus one, seven, minus one, three, two, black, hearts, eight, one. And then another thing that we can add in, we'll add in eventually with this plus one, then plus two, then plus three, plus four, plus five, continuing to go up but we love to use the end backs so that then we're alternating and holding those sequences in their mind. Now we add that very gradually, please hear me, but I just wanna show you where we go with this because we can also add the month of the year. You know, five would be May and March and July and June. And then you could add in four black clubs, six, six, February. Um, you could also add in the letter. And A is our first letter, B is second, C is third, and put that into the mix as well. Um, you can also just take something as simple as Uno cards and do the exact same thing. They have giant ones. These are a little bit bigger and they can tell me one green seven green and just alternate number color. And then we can also come in and alternate one green. And they'll learn that um, if they're here in the US, they would learn that that is Andrew Jackson, the seventh president, or they would learn that, oh, seven is um, July or the seventh letter is um, G, okay? or the seventh, we're gonna learn animals. Um, the symbol that goes with this is a left parenthesis and it's also a camel. Um, so there's a lot that we add in with the end backs that I'm gonna show you with this game. Okay. So you can also take the blink cards and blow those up as well and um, they may look a lot like the Wisconsin card sorting test for those of y'all, I know y'all are familiar with that. And we just take it to so many different levels. I can't show you all 31 ways that we use those cards to um, develop those areas. Now, another game that we use is Spot It. And what we'll do with Spot It is um, look at a card and have them tell us what they see. And we always do a systematic search. Um, I'm also trained in the four-year study method. So putting together, um, just so you know, I put together four-year science cognitive functions also with 
you know, visual processing, auditory processing, working memory, long-term memory, reasoning, executive functioning skills, attention, self-regulation, cognitive flexibility, just I kind of bring it all together. And so we'll do a systematic search. And so what do you see at 12 o'clock? Oh, I see a brown bear. I see a green frog. I see a brown squirrel. I see a green grasshopper. I see a gray gorilla. I see a yellow lion. And then we pick up another card. What do you see that matches? Oh, I see two yellow lions. You keep your constant card the entire game. What do you see? I see two brown bears. And you can even compare the sizes. Were they the same or different? I see two gray gorillas. And they would always be using language. And if the student doesn't have that language yet, you are their voice, but I will tell you, it will come. Um, we will also like write down sentences of what they just said. And if you've got students who that is challenging for, then it is, um, the teacher would write that. And um, it is a great way for them to see the meaning that goes with their words. And at the end of the game, I would turn it over and ask them, so what did we see on the first card? And see what they remembered. Once they can remember all six things, then we would play again and they can't see the card, but I would put up a card. What do you see that matches what is in my hand? Okay, I see two green grasshoppers. So they are um, doing that. Eventually we can play where I would just say, so, I see a brown horse, I see a pink octopus. And so I'm saying what's on the card, they have to visualize that. And um, then we put up the card to see if they can find the match. We have numerous ways. We will take these cards and classify them and classify the animals, whether it's those that like the land or the air or the water or we can go um, vertebrates, invertebrates, mammals, reptiles, amphibians, so many different ways. And I will tell you with the spotted cards, whether you are 92 or 22 or 42 or 12 or six, these are all, everything I've shown you, we have used with everyone, every age, and nobody has ever been offended that it seemed too childlike. Um, if you had somebody that, that was, there's also the Find It Fast that has real animals on it that um, is the same concept. Um, there's also the Super Genius cards, absolutely the same concept where you're putting the picture with the words. So um, there's different ways in with that. So those are our main card games that we use. Um, the only other one that I will show you real quickly is called Snappy Dresser. Um, I think there's some correlations here. So they basically look at a card and describe what they see, what animal they see. So they see a giraffe and start at the top. She's wearing a orange hat. She has on a blue scarf, a yellow shirt, purple leggings and green shoes, and she is carrying a balloon. And I use this game a little differently than the directions. That's what you're gonna find with any of these games is that they are tools that I've taken and expanded them beyond what the game ever even imagined they could be. And then we would look and find the match. And this match happens to be, oh, it's, I see two giraffes. And then we would look at our next one and how do they match? And you can start and talk through it. Oh, I see two blue scarves. And at the end, they can describe what they saw the animal wearing. And so that's another way in to work on that language, how to do a systematic search, that visualization. And so we are using numbers and colors and letters and objects and shapes and all those things that we use every single day and they are fun and engaging. You can also do them eventually competitively if the student can handle that, but um, we keep that very positive. 
The next thing I want to show you is the brown and back. And it builds on the Stroop effect that we're all very aware of. And we will use the animals. And they will first just simply read the animals they see, penguin, giraffe, bear, bird, spider, camel, chicken, pig, zebra, snake, tiger, elephant, turtle, cow, fish, cat, frog, crab, bee, and horse. And then they would look at set two. And on set two, they're supposed to ignore the word and say the animal they see. So you'll notice that it has spider on it. And so now they have to say penguin, giraffe, bear, bird, spider. Now, they can also come in and read the wrong thing and say spider, camel, bird, cow, horse. Now, then they can come in and alternate and say the picture, penguin, the word camel. So bear, cow, spider, tiger, chicken, fish, zebra, zebra. And then we could even come in and say picture, word, first letter of the real animal. So penguin, camel, B, bird, horse, C. Okay. Now what we're also going to do is they're going to learn directions. And um, the students love learning this. And we use the words, I see you. I see you drawing a circle around the bear. Then I see you drawing a box around the snake. Then I see you drawing an X on the fish. Then I see you drawing a triangle around the cat. Then I see you drawing a line under the elephant. Then I see you drawing a line above the turtle. Now, what did I just ask you to do? You probably cannot tell me. And I have yet to teach a group of educators or professors or psychologists or parents in this method and have anybody tell me what I just said. However, in just a couple minutes, everybody can learn it. And we will do it one step at a time. And so basically what you will learn to do is you'll say, I see myself drawing a circle around the bear. And we will start at the bear's head and go around his back. We are also working on handwriting, even though it doesn't look like it. So that is how we would make our clock letters here in um, the US. So we circle the bear, then we're gonna, we're gonna box the snake. And if they don't know how to do a box, we'll do four dots an X on the fish, a triangle around the cat, a line under the elephant, a line above the turtle. Now I'm just gonna show you those. They learn all 20, they can do it forwards and backwards. And then we remove the sheet protector. And then I simply ask them what animal is inside the circle, a bear, the box, a snake, under the X, a fish, line under elephant, turtle, cat, and they can tell me those. And then they can even come over, do it on a blank grid. So they can do it on a blank grid. So we're working on that visual memory, that visual spatial as well. So keep in mind these symbols right now, okay? The symbols have meaning. And that is also looking at some abstract thought. Um, please, once again, hear me, I can't emphasize enough how we do this with adults. We do this with um, children and they can all learn this. Then we would take them over to numbers. And I'm actually gonna be um, nice right now and show you, you'll notice that our numbers are different colors. We first start out, depending on the student, with black and white. But they can come in here and just read the number. So we're watch, doing some visual tracking find the two numbers that are the same in each row, but then we come in and they will learn that, um, and this is just fast for you guys. They will X the two, circle the one, line above five, line under four, circle the one, box the three. And they would do that on the whole sheet. And, but we would only learn to begin, I see you circle the one. Now I see you circle the one and X the two. Okay, and then we gradually add that, but then they're coming in here, going across, box the three, line under the four, circle the one, X the two, line above the five, line under the four. I hope you're also hearing that we are working on prepositions. So they are saying around, under, on, whether it's on the animal page or on this one, and they're using that language. And here they would also come in and they would 
um, used colored cubes. Now, I'm gonna, like I said, I'm being nice with you guys. We would come in and they would say, I see blue on two, green on one, black on five, yellow on four, green on one, red on three, and they would do those. And so they're using their pincer grip and they're putting those in. And then I would ask them, what number is hiding under blue? Oh, two, one, five, four, one, three. And then I would ask them, what symbol is hiding here? Oh, and they would say an X, okay, an X. And I would ask them, so what animal did I see you X? Oh, a fish. What number is hiding under green? One. What symbol did we draw? Oh, a circle. What animal did I see you circle? A bear. What number is under black? Five. What symbol did you draw on five? A line above. What animal did you draw a line above? A turtle. What number is under yellow? Four. What symbol did you draw a line under? And what animal did you draw a line under? An elephant. And we had done one. What number is under red? Three. What symbol did you draw? A box. What animal did I see you box? A snake. Now, they would also learn to do that for English speakers with the vowels. And you'll notice that A is green, E is blue, I is red, O is um, yellow, and U is black. So they would come in here and they would circle A, X, A, box I, underline A, line above A and they would learn the sounds. We would also recommend using a phonics phone where the teacher can speak into the right ear because of the connection to our main language center to make sure they're hearing the sounds. But then again, you see the symbols, you see the letters. And then I could come in and ask the student to tell me the vowel, the, his name, A, the sound, remember this was E, so it would be A, the number, oh, we box the three, the color, oh, it's yellow, because that's what we did to our four, okay? The animal, a turtle, okay? So we can do the vowel, the vowel sound, the number, the color, the animal, here in the US, we would also um, could do the president and say John Adams because X is a two and John Adams is the second president. Or you could say X and say the symbol. So A, F, three, yellow, turtle, X. And that is a six and back. We would then be able to do the very same thing on colored arrows. Now, if you are familiar with vision therapy, you know that they use colored arrows and we begin with just saying the color that they see, doing that visual tracking. Um, we work it first on up and down and then left and right to get that directionality in. And then we're gonna take it to the end back. And so here they can come in and I'm gonna show you how many different things we use here. So I'm gonna pull on the very bottom of this and the student could come in and tell me the number four, the color black, the animal fish, the vowel A, the vowel sound A, the symbol, X, the direction, and it is going right. So we're doing four, black, fish, A, A, X, right. 
I could also add in the letter if I wanted to for the month. And the letter, vowels and letters are different. And that's where you also have a lot of cognitive flexibility going on because if we were doing the letters, um, the first letter is A, the third letter is C, the second letter is B because um, blue is for two, black is for five, the fifth letter is E, A, C, A, and how we are putting all those components together. So we are doing numbers, colors, animals, letters, vowels, sounds, directions. They are writing with the dry erase marker. They're putting down um, cubes as well. So we are using, I believe, multi-components of the brain simultaneously why they are doing this. And we'll tell them, hey, you're learning a secret code. And they absolutely love doing that. Um, we take this up to nine different numbers and colors. And so that is there as well. We also bridge this over to a game of tic-tac-toe. And we have tic-tac-toe with our animals, with numbers. These are the presidents of the United States um, for a washing machine with a ton of clothes to wash a ton for George Washington. Then the Adams are inside the washing machine for John Adams. And then they're being cooked by the chef's son. So for J Thomas Jefferson and connecting those um, pictures and the importance and something from this picture is in the next picture and it continues. And then we also have a tic-tac-toe board with letters and then one that is blank. Now, you all know how to play regular tic-tac-toe. However, how we will play will be one game on two boards. And so they would um, eventually, eventually learn and they would say, oh, I see myself putting a green cube on one. I see myself putting a the opponent a black cube on five. Well, I see myself putting a blue cube on two. Well, because the you're on one and two, I see myself putting a red cube on three to block you. And then they would look at my three and five and say, I see myself putting a brown cube on seven on their board because they're on one and seven. I see myself putting a yellow cube on four and they would see themselves putting an orange cube on six to block me, and the only place left is seven. So they learn these colors and the numbers very gradually. Please trust me, I'm just showing you where this goes. So it can literally, once again, be with a little guy who had a stroke at 15 months and 30 brain surgeries, who was not even using language, who can play this with ease right now. And he couldn't even understand the concept of tic-tac-toe when we started. The same thing with nonverbal, preverbal kids in the lowest percentile imaginable who are doing this. And they are now being able to write and to start to read. And um, so imagine what it's also doing for our college students or someone with post-concussion syndrome. And we're seeing confidence build and attention build um, and we know that all those components are the foundation for learning and for academics and for life. And so they are just so crucial. And it's like I said, it's an engaging and it's fun and parents can learn it. Um, families can do it. It's being used in clinics and orphanages and public schools and private schools and special needs camps and gift with gifted kids because eventually we play tic-tac-toe in our mind. So you wouldn't even see the board, but someone would say, I see myself on five. And you would simply play it in your mind with numbers, colors, letters, presidents. And then you may be very familiar with a just very simple game of a memory, but please know we can take it to a whole other level. So we can put down colored cubes ask them to take a picture of what they see in their mind. 
once they have that picture, we would cover it up and they, we would ask them to make what they saw and they would make their picture. And then we would ask them, do we have a match? Okay, they would check it. Oh, can you make it match? They make it match. And we do that with cubes. But we can also say, take a picture. Now, write down the number that goes with the color you saw. Oh, four, three, one, five. And that would be the corresponding. They could also, they also learn that four is a line under for the yellow. Red would be a box, green, a circle, and black, a line above. Or we can go in and ask them the letter that this would go with. So we can put here numbers, letters, animals, symbols. But one thing about Equipping Minds is every single part of it works together. The games are not in isolation because learning is not in isolation. And so that's why it builds and builds. So remember our blink cards, okay? So they could also go in, take blink cards. And if you happen to have somebody who has both decks, the original deck and the new deck, then you end up with nine shapes, nine colors, and five numbers. And so that's kind of an important thing because we get, if you put both decks together, you would have green and blue, and this is in the order, red, yellow. We also have black. And then we use this one as and I'm sorry, I'll go back because the original deck has the yellow I want, yellow. And then we have orange. So you can kind of see the difference there. And then we have brown. And then our gray, which also goes with eight is white. And then our purple, okay? And then we could say, now look, we're going to say that color's in charge, color rules right now. So tell me the number this would be. So because it's purple, it's going to be nine. Now tell me the color you see. Oh, gray. Now the animal, because it's brown, it's going to be a camel. Okay. Now the letter of the alphabet. Well, it's orange, so it's F. Or the president. If it's black, it's James Monroe. Or if it's the month of the year, black is five, so that would be May. Or the symbol, oh, a line under, okay? So we can even then take our blank cards and use the end back because the colors have meaning. The last thing I'll show you that um, many of y'all have used the Stroop colored words, you're familiar with it, but now think about everything you know with Equippy Minds that I've showed you. So those colored wards, the one that we use from Eric Chudler um, at the University of Washington gave us permission. You'll notice that we have all nine of our colors here. And so they could tell us the number, but color rules. Now colors in charge right now. So the number would be one because it's green. And then the color, they would say the actual color and that's red, the animal, would be an elephant. The vowel would be A. The vowel sound would be F. The letter would be E. The symbol, because this is orange, the color's orange, the symbol would be a slash. So we take the Stroop colored words and use all those components on them as well. So thank you if you watch this to the end. Um, we are having um, a conference at the end of April. It's going to be online, interactive, so anyone can watch it. We have online courses that we do. Um, I would love to see this in schools, in um, 
in research. You can read my doctoral research that is on um, ResearchGate. It's also on the Equipping Minds website under the research tab. And it was done with um, 32 students with an SLD diagnosis where 16 did Equipping Minds an hour a day over seven weeks for 30 hours. And there was an active control group that got more academic intervention, 30 hours of intervention. And we saw a 16 point gain on their IQ composite. We saw significant gains on, of course, their fluid reasoning for nonverbal, their crystallized intelligence for their verbal reasoning. And then it generalized to their academics as well. And we saw statistically significant gains in science, even when we ran the regression analysis and on the pair T test, we saw significant gains in reading and spelling. They, um, and that was on the Tiranovas. Now, they also had all been at the same school for two years. The only difference between their academic testing was one group got more academic intervention. The other group did equipping minds. The other thing I will tell you is we use primitive reflex exercises because many students' neurodevelopment was impacted in utero in the first year of life. And so this is a um, just a USB. There's a download that's all of $20 that can be used. And it takes um, 12 to 15 minutes a day. And it should be done for six weeks. Some schools do it long term throughout the year. But these reflexes are the actual developmental pieces. So we love to use it. We also have schools and in our private practice, we use sound therapy. So we use one out of Australia and this is classical music that is filtered. And so it is stronger in the right ear to make the right ear dominant. And so we will um, see students who have attention issues, who have emotional issues, who have self-regulation issues, um, auditory processing, just calm their system because it goes in to rehabilitate. Um, we have one school administrator whose tinnitus is gone because it goes in to bring healing to that auditory system. So we take a very holistic approach. You'll see that on the website. And because we put it all together, you literally, we are addressing cognitive development with those things that you would see on your WISC-5 because it is um, the last pieces we looked at, we're doing sensory and motor development. There's a lot of visual and auditory processing going on. And because of the interaction with the games, that social engagement, boy, we're seeing relationships, confidence, language, self-regulation, just improve um, more than we had imagined. So, Thank you for taking the time. If you watch this to the end, um, if you would like to use this in any way in research um, and having a conversation and using it you know, in, with groups that you might have connections with, please know that this it, it's here to be used. Um, and there's tons of free training on the Equipping Minds YouTube channel as well to make this accessible to, to everyone. Um, I was the parent, my husband and I, who spent tens of thousands of dollars on therapy for our son. And then I needed to create and develop this. Um, so thank you. If you, once again, if you watch this to the end and would love to talk, thank you for what you do and your passion for helping children and adults.